to, to fund the Contras. He was involved in the Phoenix program in Vietnam, which was basically a CIA-run death squad operation. Um, and he was put in charge in 1967 of hunting Che in Bolivia. And there's some debate. Uh, che entered Bolivia in late 1966. And after, uh, after having, meeting some success with a small band of guerrillas, he began, they began to run into problems. And, and, uh, and they became increasingly isolated in the highlands of Bolivia. And Felix Rodriguez was working closely with Bolivian military and security personnel. And they captured him in, in October yes, October um, 8, 1967, and executed him on October 9th. Rodriguez claims that he um, that he wanted Che alive, and there's some debate about this. And it's, it's perfectly feasible that the U.S. did want to interrogate Che. But what's interesting and ironic about about the the execution of Che is that Rodriguez claims that even though he had orders from the from the U.S. to keep Che alive, that that the Bolivian government and the Bolivian military on the ground had direct orders from the Bolivian high command that they had to execute him. And Rodriguez claims that since they were on foreign territory, they had to, uh, they had to uh, honor Bolivian sovereignty. Now, this must have been one of the few, one time in, in U.S. history where they actually honored Latin American sovereignty in, in, in the case of executing somebody who was fighting for Latin he American sovereignty. He went on to be close to President George H.W. Bush's national security advisor, Donald Gregg, uh, when he was uh, Vice President, pictures of him at the White House yeah. together with him, is now doing interviews in Miami, uh, proudly talking about taking down Che in the final picture when Che thought he was going to live, but uh, Felix Rodriguez, uh, they took the picture and then said, now you will die. Yeah, and he did go on to be close with Bush, and this was involvement in Iran-Contra. Bush, obviously, was the head of the CIA, and that's what he developed close contacts with Bush and, and Greg. Uh, Iran-Contra, he was involved in with, with along with uh, Luis Posada, another another Cuban terrorist. They were in charge of running running military uh, supplies to the Contras illegally. They, they uh, you know, the Cuban Revolution produced, radicalized both sides in many ways and produced generations of revolutionaries and counter Revolutions. We're going to go to break, then come back to this discussion. Our guest is Professor Greg Grandin, Professor of Latin American History at NYU, his book, Empire's Workshop. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute. Vengo cantando esta salva con redoble libertario. Mataron al guerrillero. Che. Comandante Guevara, selvas, pampas y montañas, patria o muerte es su destino. Selvas, pampas y montañas, patria o muerte es su destino. Que los derechos humanos Los violan en tantas partes, en América Latina, domingo, lunes y martes, nos imponen militares para sofuscar los pueblos, dictadores, asesinos, gorilas y gente. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, Greg Grand, and our guest, author of Empire's Workshop, Latin America, the United States, and the Rise of the New Imperialism. Um, che Guevara, his legacy, and what it means for all of Latin America right now. Well, as, the, as your report suggested, there's celebrations and commemorations all over Latin America, indeed all over the world. And Che Guevara has become an icon of the Latin American left. And in many ways, he's much more... Uh, celebrated and honored today than he was during while well, he was alive. While he was alive, the Cuban Revolution symbolized something of a break between the old communist-based Latin American left with its emphasis on reform and compromise and a new revolutionary armed left. And, and, and there were many divisions and controversies and fights and, and sectarian fights while he was alive. But now he's become a universal symbol of the Latin American left. And if you look at his legacy, his legacy has, has, has produced a, 
the Latin American left, which is profoundly democratic, profoundly humanist. You look at the, going back to Felix Rodriguez, you look at the legacy of Rodriguez and the, the legacy of counterinsurgency in Latin America leads straight to the torture rooms of Abu Ghraib. So you just compare those two and you, and, and you have a sense of what, of what Che's legacy is in Latin America. Che is a symbol, and again, he's become more of a universal symbol of, of a certain different kinds of values than, 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 uh, than what he represented while he was alive. Uh, those values are anti-imperialism, standing up to the United States, defense of Latin American sovereignty, um, a certain kind of revolutionary purity, a search for values that aren't rooted in the marketplace, that aren't quite as commodified as, as the neoliberal world that has been imposed on Latin America in the last 20 years. So this is why I think Che has become such an enduring icon of, of Latin American Democrats. Well, I have questions about the, the iconic stature uh, to the degree that, I mean, it's almost, it's very much like Malcolm. Uh, and suddenly mm -hmm. everyone was wearing a, a Malcolm t-shirts uh, after the Spike Lee movie. But to what degree the young people who are see him as an icon, really understand the, 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 the struggles, the real struggles that he represented rather than just sort of the, 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 the fashionable rebellion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the New York Times today had an article about even in Cuba, his image is being commodified to some degree on keychains and T-shirts and raising revenue for the state. But um, again, I, I think that I think they may not understand the specifics of the struggle or the specifics of the, the strategy and, and different uh, the currents within Marxism that he represented, but I think that that beyond just a commodified Im image of, of, of a revolutionary chic, particularly in Latin America, he does represent a certain kind of non-commodified value, mm -hmm. uh, standing up to the U.S. and and you know I was in Latin, I was in Guatemala when the war ended in 1996 officially, and all of a sudden his image is everywhere in, in Guatemala. This is a country, probably one of the most repressed countries, arguably still is in Latin America, and here Che was, who was no fan of free speech in Cuba, becomes an icon of exactly that in, in, in Guatemala, so. The, the, and the other concern is also that I have is in terms of how that legacy uh, is, uh, is analyzed. I, th I think uh, President Morales said something very interesting when he, uh, in the interview we had with him, when he had a meeting with Fidel Castro uh, a few years before he was elected president. And uh, Fidel told, he says Fidel told him, don't do what I did, do what Chavez did. Uh, in, in essence, uh, don't, uh, see how you can mobilize the people to achieve constitutional change uh, and transform the society through democratic methods. And yeah, and I think that's a great example of how adaptable and evolutionary the legacy is on the Latin American left. You know, che is held up by those always on the hunt for you know, any kind of residual sympathy of the militant new left as, as the person, or the Cuban Revolution, as the, as the event which inflamed a continent. But that inflammation actually started with the Guatemalan overthrow of, with the CIA overthrow of Guatemalan democracy. And that's what inflamed a continent. And there's many reasons why the Latin American left embraced armed revolution in the 1960s. But the fact that it's managed to evolve into the kind of democratic, and again, it's, it's, it's one of the few bright spots in the, not just in Latin America, but in the geopolitical landscape, uh, landscape racked by wars and fundamentalism. The Latin American left is one of the, and, and, and the fact that they've adopted an, 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 a talisman of, 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 of insurrection, it shows just how adaptable that, that, that icon has become. Well, let's Whereas, talk about where uh, Latin America is today. At the break, we played Victor Jara, uh, the song Zamba El Che. Victor Jara killed right after September 11th, 1973, when Pinochet rose to power. Now, um, Michelle Bachelet was in New York, the Chilean ambassador who herself, the Chilean president who herself was tortured with her mother, her father killed under uh, Pinochet. He died of a heart attack. He was a general. Um, where is Latin America based on what it's come out of? 60, 70 dies, 73, Pinochet rises to power. You've got the brutality in Salvador and Guatemala through the 70s. Yeah, well, Latin America right now is, a, and then beyond beyond the the, the brutality of, the, of 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 Reagan Central American Crusade in the 1980s, 1990s, you see the imp, 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 imposition of neoliberalism, free market radicalism on Latin America, which produced staggering uh, levels of inequality and and and, and economic stagnation. And, and what you're seeing is is an, an attempt to break free of that. There's a lot of divisions among the Latin American left between a reformist, a moderate reformist like Bachelet, or or or. Some 
somebody like Chavez more willing to mobilize a populist base in order to confront capital. But I think they all share a common agenda, and that is that is that is breaking free, uh, at least as to the degree possible, of U.S. influence through through diversifying markets, deepening integration among Latin American nations, looking for other sources of credit and capital. Now, all of this is a far cry from Che and Fidel urging the, the, the youth of the world to, 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 to throw off the shackles of imperialism. But I think you can trace a, a connection between what Che was trying to do and what, and what this new generation of reformers are, are they, doing. They also share a common, a common sense that the government and the state have a responsibility to affect the social life of the population. So yeah, and that's the most profound, I think, rejection of neoliberalism and the Washington consensus. You know, in many ways, neoliberalism is not dead in Latin America. There's still this, you know, you can make the case that it's as strong as ever. But there is a return, there's a kind of attempt to rebroaden the definition of democracy to mean not just a narrow version of political liberties and freedoms, but to in include some kind of social component. And in some ways, that goes back to Che's youth. You know, che coming out of growing up in the 1940s, 30s, and 40s, the, de the definition of democracy was much broader in Latin America than it is now. It included not just li individual liberties and political freedoms, but some form of social equality and wealth redistribution. And 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 in some ways, that's and and the Washington Consensus w and the the terror of the Cold War, followed by the Washington Consensus, was an attempt to redefine the notion of democracy and narrow it down, make it much more restrictive, a kind of a kind of free market version of, of democracy. And what you're seeing now is an attempt to fight to broaden that definition of democracy to include social rights, some form of wealth redistribution. And that's what I think is shared even among the most reformist and even Frankly, even some of the most more conservative Latin American leaders share that vision. Back to this day, 40 years ago, in Bolivia, Che Guevara is killed. His reported last words, I know you've come to kill me. Shoot, you are only going to kill a man. It took some 30 more years or more to even find his bones and then have his uh, corpse return to Cuba. Talk about the significance of that. John Lee Anderson, the author who wrote about Che, uh, interviewing the general who just in an offhand way happened to say, oh, yes, we buried him under the airport here. Yeah, and in many ways, the current Che never, the, 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 the celebration and honor of Che never went away. But in some ways, it, the, this current revival really did start with that repatriation of his remains back to Cuba. And, the, and, and, and it all, that also corresponded with the, the, the resurrection and reemergence of a Latin American left. Those two things mocked each other. They, in some ways, they one inaugurated the other. So it's interesting. You know, what's in, what, but there's another legacy that was reported on in the Latin American press. I don't know. It didn't get much attention here, is that the person who actually did the physic the who killed Che who actually pulled the trigger. He's a Bolivian um, and he's still alive. And he just recently received a cataract operation in a clinic that was built by Cuban doctors, that was staffed by Cuban doctors. So that I think is that 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 captures the legacy of Che right there. Well, we will nicely. leave it there. I want to thank you very much, Greg Grandin, for joining us. His book is called um, Empire's Workshop. Latin America, the United States, and the rise of the new imperialism. You, together with Juan Gonzalez, uh, Cheza Boudin, um, and Tarek Ali, will be at the Brecht Forum tonight at 6.30, talking about the significance of Che Guevara. Tarek Ali will also join you. We'll have an on our broadcast tomorrow. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Burke, Shrifo Dukadus, Aaron Mate, Anjali Comet, Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Ricardo Lobo, Perry Mache, Kizzy Cox, Mike Filippo, Miguel Nagara, our engineer. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Hugh Grant, Hani Massoud, Samantha Chambly, John Randolph, Kieran Crude Meadows, Laura Chipley, Vesta Godars, our website, democracynow.org. There you can get our headlines and stories. I'm Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.